to the east coast of Florida. And boy, are my swim fins tired. We're in historic St. Augustine, Florida, America's oldest city. I've landed on the same beach where Spanish explorers touched ground back in the 1500s. Like the explorers, I'm here to investigate a very curious place, the Fountain of Youth. America's oldest city is a strange place for a fountain of youth. Let's investigate. This is no fountain. This is a fort, complete with moat. Kind of like a private river that surrounds it. The fort is called the Castillo de San Marcos and it's considered the jewel of St. Augustine. If you don't believe me, check out the diamond-shaped ramparts at each corner. That's so they can shoot the cannons in all directions. This former fort is now a national monument. The fort's name is Spanish because it was built by the Spaniards starting in the year 1672, and the fort was never conquered. St. Augustine is a time war. About 500 years ago, in the year 1513, Spanish explorer Don Juan Ponce de Leon sailed here and named the area La Florida. Legend has it Ponce de Leon was on a search for gold and mystical waters that would make you young forever. I suppose vitamins, exercise, and a good night's sleep didn't occur to him. Ponce de Leon planned to call the mystical water the Fountain of Youth, only he would have called it that in Spanish. Then in 1565, a Spanish conquistador named Don Pedro Menendez de Aviles followed Ponce de Leon and sailed to La Florida. Menendez de Aviles settled St. Augustine and declared the rest of La Florida a Spanish territory. As you probably already know, St. Augustine is the oldest continually populated city in the United States. If you're looking for the oldest anything, St. Augustine has the market cornered, at least in the United States. There's the old jail that was used to house old jailbirds in the 1800s. My second cousin, Turnkey Gadget, used to work here as night guard and alarm system. They had to let him go when they caught him picking his own pocket. Here's the oldest store museum. No, it doesn't sell old stores. It does have more than 100,000 authentic items and shows what life was like in the 1800s. Back then, you could come here for medicine, having a tooth pulled, getting a haircut, catching up on the gossip, or even buying some groceries. 
This is the oldest hardware store, called the Spanish Quarter Museum. Spanish colonists spent thousands of hours over red-hot anvils, hand-fashioning and hammering out every single tool, piece of equipment, and nail, and loving it. Look, over there, it's the oldest wooden schoolhouse in the USA. This school is so old, the chalkboard collects social security. That's either a dunce cap or he's stuck his head in a very large pencil sharpener. Sometimes the children are unruly in class. Then they must spend time under the stairway there. We call it the dungeon. Wowzers! Dunce caps and dungeons. And people call these the good old days. That's either the world's largest candy cane or strangest barber shop. Actually, it's St. Augustine's Lighthouse, though it looks pretty heavy from here. Let's get to the bottom, uh, top of this. Of course, the top is 219 steps away, and there are no plans to put in an escalator. Wowzers! Would you believe all that light comes from this tiny bulb? Actually, a small bulb like this works because the light is reflected through these prisms. An Inspector Gadget field trip fact. It took Menendez and his fleet two months to sail from Spain to Florida. Today, that same journey takes just nine hours by plane or gadget copter, and another nine hours to find your luggage. Crocodiles and birds, oh my! That's what you'll find in many parts of Florida. This farm is literally crawling with alligators and crocodiles. 2,700 of them. But if you try to count them, don't count on your fingers. It's also the home of my friend Gomer, a 50-year-old crocodile from New Guinea. Of course, he could be lying about his age. Know this. He is the largest reptile on this half of the planet. 17 feet 9 inches long, and he weighs more than 1,900 pounds. How do you feed a one ton crocodile? Very carefully. When Gomex says he'd like to have you for dinner, he means it. Gators and crocs are known people eaters. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. Florida is one of the hottest states in the U.S., so it figures that we find ourselves at one of its hottest attractions, the Daddle Do It, Daddle Pepper World Headquarters in St. Augustine. They say that Datto peppers are some of the hottest peppers in the world. At Daddle Do It, you can see how they pick and pickle their prickly peppers. It's a good thing the pepper pickers are wearing gloves. The peppers are so hot that the picklers must wear masks so they won't inhale pepper dust. They had a guy named Peter Piper working here, but he picked a peck and retired to Pensacola. Wowzers, these peppers are crying. Maybe they're sweating because they're so hot. All the more reason to find that fountain of you. That'll do it for the Daddle Peppers. Oh, I guess I'll try just one. Yeah! Water! Water! Go, go, gadget fire extinguisher! Aha! Could this be the spot where Don Juan Ponce de Leon Discover the Fountain of Youth? It looks more like a leaky pipe than a fountain. Actually, the Fountain of Youth is a natural underground spring that feeds these fountains and wells. It also quenches the thirst of the thousands of youth seekers who come here each year. Excuse me, could I have a sip of that? Wowzers, this stuff really works. 
Either my gadgets just shrunk, or I'm 12 years old again and late for science class. The Fountain of Youth still springs eternal after all these years. Mr. Ponce de Leon would be so proud if only he'd lived long enough to be young again. My gadgets and I are finally back to normal again, if you call a man with hands in his hat normal. I hope you had a good time on our field trip. Fooling around at the fort, gawking at the gators, pickling the peppers and sipping magical waters. Uh-oh, I think I picked up an alligator instead of my suitcase. Go, go, gadget legs!